This week, DJI released their direct drone to phone remote ID video that pretty much turned the drone world upside down, caused a lot of anger and a lot of hate that was directed towards them. However, most of this has been misdirected and it needs to be pushed towards the FAA because this is all part of the NPRM proposals that are going to close in nine days. Now, in this video, I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of what DJI are actually talking about. And whilst I'm not going to say they're entirely blameless in all of this, what they're actually doing is demonstrating to you that this is what is going to be part of the future regulation. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about that as well and talk to you about what you need to do because the NPRM closes on the 2nd of March 2020. That is nine days from today from the closing date and you still have time to have your say on this. Now, whilst these regulations are already in place in the USA and they are not going to change, US users have the opportunity to kick back because there are some genuine privacy concerns around how this information is going to affect normal users as well as commercial operators, especially if their location that they're currently standing in when they're flying is going to be transmitted. Now, if you haven't seen what I'm talking about, we'll go and have a quick look. This week, DJI released this, their drone to phone remote ID video, which demonstrated broadcast remote ID transmitting out from the aircraft, showing its location and the pilot location as well. Now, I'm going to click play and I haven't got the audio on, but it will give you an overview of what they are talking about. Now, this caused quite the upset and it kicked off with a lot of people saying, hey, DJ, if you do this, you're going to end your business and we're going to buy drones from other manufacturers. Well, the reality is what DJI are actually showing you here is what is required as part of not only the NP PRM proposals in the USA, but are already in law to come into force in Europe from July 2020. And that is all part of the remote ID framework. Now, both the USA and Europe are recommending that they use the new ASTM standard, which was published just yesterday. And that means that it's going to basically use the Wi-Fi aware standard to transmit the broadcast ID from the aircraft. Now, DJI are saying that this is the preferred version over the network ID element that is also being proposed within the NPRM. And they're actually right. The reality is the broadcast ID is a much simpler and straightforward system overall. And most drone users would be happy with it, apart from the fact that both the USA and the EU are all requiring that the pilot's location is also transmitted as part of this data. And the way it's intended to work is your aircraft will transmit basically over Wi-Fi. The standard smart device will pick it up with an app and they will be able to see where your aircraft is, its serial number or your special ID, as well as the location of the pilot. And this is the bit that's really got people upset, which is that pilot location. Now, whilst it is DJI showing you this, it is all part of the FAA and EU's proposals. Now, if they're going to use the ASTM standard, it means it is going to be an open system that allows it to work and work with any standard device. Now, we rose some serious concerns over this, myself, Gary, Bruce, and others, when the original EU regulations were being proposed as well around transmitting the pilot's location, because especially if you're a commercial operator, having the location of the pilot raises concerns of theft, robbery, um, injury, as well as it could actually end remote pilots being able to operate on their own. Because in a standard situation where I'm a commercial operator and I'm out flying, I have to do risk assessments around where I think people are going to be able to get to my location and take off location and it's called an encroachment and I have to be able to secure that. Now the reality is, as part of my risk assessment, I have to look at what are the chances of people being able to actually do that. And that is fairly low normally if I'm flying on private land. The chances of someone just randomly walking in there without knowing I'm there is fairly low. However, if there is now an app that is going to show people where I am, that actually changes. And the reality is it could mean single ops are over because you might have to have someone with you at all times to be able to ensure that your landing area is secure. And this is the problem with this remote ID framework. Now, 
DJI put the video out and as I said it did cause quite a stir but the reality is they're just showing you what is going to be mandated. Now if we look in the FAA's proposals what they say is as follows. The rules must store a certain amount of data which includes the identity, location, altitude regarding the unmanned aircraft and its control station and the basics are it will have to transmit that all of the time. Now within the FAA proposals which I talked about in my other video was about whether it's being a broadcast ID or a network ID and really what DJI are doing in this video is saying we don't want a network ID, we feel broadcast ID is good enough. They're also showing you what will be required of them to be able to comply with that as well. And it's clear within the FAA proposals that they want the unmanned pilot's location to be transmitted as well. Within the EU proposals, it is also in there too. And again, using the word proposal is wrong for this. This is actually now in law and it will come into force on the 1st of July 2020 for both the EU and the UK. And it will require aircraft to be able to be certified under the new class system to transmit the geographical position of the remote pilot. Now it can actually be the remote pilot or its takeoff point depending on which one it is. Now there are some massive differences between the EU and the US proposals because the EU is only going to be for certain types of aircraft under the new C0, 1, 2, 3 or 4 class system. If you want to fly under the new A1 or A2 classifications but within the USA proposals they're going to be required for every aircraft period that is flying outside an FRI. Now and this is the problem with the US proposals. Now whereas the EU proposals are already in place the FAA ones are still an NPRM and you have until the 2nd of March 2020, nine days from the day I've made this video, to give your feedback. Now, if you're going to give feedback on this, going in and saying things like, I don't want remote ID at all, it's not really going to change anything. The reality is remote ID is coming. It is being legislated in pretty much every country in the world as time goes on. It's already done in the EU, we're already signed off and done and dusted. The US is going to implement it. What you need to do is influence how much of it is going to be implemented. So whether it's going to be this network ID, which is going to bring additional costs and restrictions on flight, or a broadcast ID, which is a far simpler solution to implement via a firmware update, for instance. However, you also want to be kicking off about this pilot location data because whilst we can't change the EU if the USA proposals take this out there's a chance that this might actually get looked at again within the EU proposals and there is some genuine concerns around how this affects people's privacy as well with regards to GPDR and their rights within the US too. So you have time to have your say on these USA proposals. Now there is no question DJI didn't cause quite a bit of stir with this video. It certainly got quite a few people rattled. A lot of anger was pushed towards DJI on this as well. I'm not going to sit here and say that DJI are completely innocent in this and they haven't been lobbying for this. At this point that doesn't matter. What matters today is what part of this NPRM is going to go through. Whether we're going to get the full version with network ID and broadcast ID or whether you guys can get this watered down and get it reduced to be a more reasonable solution. Now I don't think it's going to go through as it is today because it is so crazy I don't think they are that mad to put it through as it is or all of the massive companies have clearly lobbied to get this through. However it needs your feedback to get the changes. We're now up to 20,389. When I checked last week, it was just over 15,000. But 20,000 people is still a minuscule amount compared to how many people out there. Just some of the DJ Facebook groups alone have over 70,000 users, RC groups, all of these other forums. If you take, you know, but the YouTube channels, the thousands of subscribers that there are on them. So you have your opportunity to have your say on this, but you need to do it now. You need to get this feedback in before it's too late. Now, something else I will just mention on this is that they intend to be using the Wi-Fi Away standard using the ASTM 
um, standard for this as well. Now, this has actually just been released this week. The ASTM standard was literally released a couple of days ago and it's available to buy for $89 or £89. I have no intention of spending 89 quid just to be able to read what the specification is. And there is some irony that they want to charge you £85 to get hold of a specification that's meant to be open for everyone to have access to little bit interest in that. However, um, it is now available and DJI are proposing that they use the Wi-Fi Alliance's Wi-Fi Away standard, which is basically just like um, a bit like Apple AirShare and things like that. It allows the devices to communicate openly. Now, DJI have also put out a DJI Hub who should know where you fly um, piece as well and I'll put a link to this in the description of the video and it is well worth a read and again it's about feeding back to the FAA on should the pilot's location be transmitted as part of remote ID. Arguing whether remote ID should happen I think is too late. This is all about now of control of what information is going to be put out there and it is well worth a read. It's quite an interesting article. Look I don't believe any of the drone manufacturers are completely innocent in all of this. Do I honestly believe that they've all wanted one thing or another? Like remote ID is being pushed for years as being a solution to some problems. That isn't to say any of the manufacturers got us to where we are today. The reality is there are some very, very big commercial players involved in the committees that are trying to make the rules for drone use in the USA. The likes of companies like Amazon, Boeing, Kitty Hawk, all of the UTMs, companies that will benefit greatly from there being tighter regulation on drone use, which will allow them to carve up the skies, put traffic lanes, bring manned aviation up higher, bring model aviation lower and carve out commercial air traffic strips in the middle for drone delivery and all of the things like that. So whilst people can sit there and say manufacturers have said this and this, there are far bigger issues at play here than what even DJI, Autel, Unique and all of the others have been proposing. This is far larger than that. This is about the commercialization of the sky for large commercial operations to be able to use direct drone delivery with the likes of Amazon and others like that. And again, that anger thrown towards DJI, put it towards the FAA. Go check out some of the names on these committees and you might be surprised at just how little representation DJI have. The general model aviation community has as well. It's all the big players about the big money. Now, I will put the link to your feedback to get your feedback on this in this video. Again, nine days from today, every day after the published date of this video is one day less. 2nd of March 2020, this closes. 20,000, we should have 10 times that up there right now. Really, please do get involved. Please do have your say on this. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll do another one again soon.